Hi, thanks for joining me again. A quick video today on MND Monodelphus. We'll just put in a, a couple of quick lines of support and resistance. I would mark this one first. Um, it's still fairly recent. The only thing I don't like about it is it only has quite low volume, so you can be a bit questionable. So um, it looks like a significant event, so we'll mark it. I'll just mark it with a thin line at the moment. Um, I like this next one a bit better. It's more recent and it's higher volume. I'll mark it with a heavier line. And over here, it's a bit older. This bar only has lighter volume. This one is much stronger. I don't like the long tail. I'll mark a long tail if I need to. I'd much rather mark a shorter table, tail. And uh, both the closures are about the $18. They're very similar to each other. So I'll suggest that um, this bar is perhaps a better one to mark of the two. Um, it can be adjusted later if it turns out that prices respecting the other line more. Um, when you're looking at lines like this, the line is showing where you're expecting strongest support or resistance to emerge. Either side of a line, support or resistance will fade out. And this is showing you the peak level. And you should always think of it like that, sort of like a zone of support and resistance rather than a fixed set level, especially on um, stocks that aren't high in liquidity. This is certainly not a trading stock and not for most people anyway, it's relatively low in liquidity. You can see on this bar here, uh, price moved quite a substantial amount on very low volume. So it can be pushed around a little, especially when the uh, buyers and the sellers aren't particularly strong at a certain level. It only takes a small amount of buying or selling to move price in considerably. Now, um, this bar on the end here, the 5th of August, was the day that the trade tensions between the US and China first emerged, the new trade tensions. And uh, in response, although price had been moving lower, it had found support within this level. And then the trade tensions emerged between the US and China price sliced through all three levels and closed just below. Now, if price then reversed, closed back on top and closed above this bar's high, uh, you might think that price is going to find sufficient support and continue sideways. But to close below all three levels of potential support, um, if the price continues lower in response, then some weakness has really emerged. We'll move on now and, and see. You can see price now has gapped below all three levels of previous support. Volume increased. Now, remember, this was the traded range of the bar, and this gap here is the true range, including the gap from the previous close. We'll go ahead a bar, and you've got a little... Um, Consolidation type bar, VSA would call that a test bar. It's trading within the range of the previous bar. Volume reduced, so selling pressure reduced. And it's a nothing bar, it's a consolidation bar. It's trying to consolidate those losses and have no further losses. The next bar is a similar bar, another consolidation bar. And being an up bar, after trading down through the range of the previous bar, and then recovering to close back above and almost at the previous bar's high. And you would say a little bit of support's come in here, some modest support has come in here. Volumes aren't particularly high, but we'll call that modest support. And um, the next bar is up, and that's confirming the, the little bit of support that's been seen in here. Now, the next bar tried to go above the traded range of this bar and uh, did find some support supply coming in to close back within the range of this bar, but about mid bar on the individual bar. Uh, so there is a little bit of supply still there and another consolidation bar. 
it had dipped below the low of this bar and recovered and closed about level. So um, a little bit of support remains. Um, it's not particularly strong, but the low volume here um, is showing you or suggesting to you that the supply that was drawn out as price dipped lower and then recovered was only light. But in response, uh, price gap down from the previous close. It's uh, made a lower low, so that's a little bit of weakness. Um, each time price dips below a previous low, um, the previous support has been broken. When you look at an individual bar, and here uh, on this particular day, uh, the traded range, this is where resistance was, and this is where support was and you can look at it that way on each individual bar it's a um, particularly good example when when you're on a reasonably high volume it's not so much when you're on light volume and this perhaps isn't a great example because it's a gap down bar but um, on an individual bar the high is showing you where resistance was on that day and the low is where support was at that day. And the position of the close is like the equilibrium level where the forces of supply and demand balanced on that day. Doesn't mean it'll be exactly the same as that the next day, but on that day. And you can use that as a measuring stick as you move along. This bar's low was broken by this bar, and then this bar's low was broken by this bar. So. Um, there is still weakness there, especially when you look below and you see there was an increase in volume here. So you need to be wary. You've had weakness come through this break through the previous support levels, all three of them. And then um, a little bit of modest support was found, but um, this is suggesting there's still some weakness around. Okay, we'll move on and price goes up in response. It's taken out the high of this bar here and closed above it. It's still quite a distance from those previous support levels. If price can't make it back to there, that would be another hint that there's weakness in the market. We'll move on further again. Price has gapped down again on an increase in volume and it's closed below the low of the previous bar which was there. So this market is still showing some weakness. There's no doubt about it. Um, there's, a, there's tentative support in the market. It keeps coming through above the 17 level, but um, every time price pushes higher, it's encountering more supply. That's pushing it back down each time. So we'll go on again. Price has moved slightly higher again. This is all like a consolidation pattern within the traded range of uh, this gap down bar. Apart from the one bar here, it's all within that traded range. And every time price goes up, it's on generally lighter volumes. You can see down here, the two, the two up bars, and then the down bar was on a stronger volume. Same again, stronger volume on the down bar. So there's still supply there selling into the demand. This time price accelerates higher on a good volume and it closes right at the beginning of the support, which will now turn to resistance because anyone who is trapped in here is looking to get out or possibly looking to get out. So uh, if price pushes up and then um, it gives some people the chance to get out, they sell into it, which makes it more difficult. That's why you'll get a close right on the line. Now, if the price is strong and demand strong, It'll push back through, um, usually with an increase in volume. Anyone who was considering selling may reconsider and hold on um, because price is back above that level again. But um, if there's a weak response, then um, anyone who is going to sell does sell and it forces price lower again. Okay, this was the day where Monodelphus announced their uh, full year results and um, prices, and they were a little soft, a little softer than expected, if I remember rightly. Um, 
and price dips lower in response and then closes back at the high of the bar on a sharp increase in volume. Now, you would consider this a shakeout at the time. Um, now, being very high volume like this, um, you would be looking at the low of this bar. Um, that's where support was at the time. And the high of this bar is where resistance was at the time. The close was strong. So it's showing you that demand was in charge that day. The buyers uh, absorbed the seller's supply and a firm close is how it finished. Okay, we'll move on again. Now this day, our volumes even higher. Um, you can see down here, volumes even higher. Um, price did trade below the low of the announcement bar. Closed just back within it, but only just. You can see there's been a big gap down from the previous close. This is supply beginning to overwhelm the demand. No doubt about it. It's still holding on, but only just. And in response, price breaks below the low of this bar. Here's the bar, here's the low. This time, price is broken right down. On reduced volume, but the demand looks like it was spent or it stepped aside and the supply then was able to slice price lower. Um, it's still, it's, it's broken below the low of the original down bar um, and closed below it. So it's looking um, questionable at best. Uh, a modest rise in price. You see spreads narrowed considerably. Volume stayed about the same. This was some tentative support coming in where there's some support emerging. It's only modest, but it's there. Move on again. The price sliced lower. You would have found that anyone who did buy on this bar here probably dumped immediately. And um, prices gapped down um, almost in the fashion of some sort of shakeout. Um, we'll see how price responds as we go on. But um, when price gaps down like that, after you've seen um, price break down from previous level, um, this can sometimes respond back and, and close back above the high of this down bar, which would then be um, modestly bullish. Um, there's been so much weakness around in this stock, we'll have to wait and see. And just finally on this bar, uh, when prices gap down below a previous level like this, it's um, generally going to be showing you that price is, is really weak and it's going to break down further and cascade lower, or it's some form of climactic action or a shakeout of this previous level. So you'll just have to see subsequent trading to, to understand what's actually going on here, especially as there was an increase in volume as price sliced lower below the previous levels. You just, it's difficult to know immediately. You have to make your mind up as price goes along and you see the response to this bar. If price continues to cascade lower, you know it was pure weakness. If price attempts to support or it closes back above the high of this bar's traded range, you get some sort of indication that um, perhaps it was a, a shake out of some form. So now we'll move along and see what happened. There was no response higher. Volume's about the same. Spread has narrowed considerably. Uh, this was tentative support coming in for a second time. Um, the tentative support tried to come in on this bar, but it failed and it was probably dumped. Um, and that was would have uh, partly accounted for the increase in volume here. You see volume's about the same. Spread has narrowed considerably. Remembering the spread of this bar actually comes out here. This is the true range. 
that should be added on top. Now there's pretty much no doubt there was some tentative support come in on this bar. So now whether it'll be strong enough, we'll have to wait and see. If there's further weakness, I imagine they'll dump again, just like uh, price was dumped on this bar. So let's move on and see. This is a second consolidation bar. Price has price has dipped below the low again, um, but it recovered easily and closed right at the high. Um, now volume was a bit more reduced back to average, and um, that's suggesting that selling pressure did ease at that point in time. Not out of the woods yet, though. The up bar, uh, narrow spread. Um, a narrow spread up bar like this would generally tell you, especially on an increase in volume and above average volume, would say, suggest that there's still supply in the market. It may be absorption. You have to wait for the response the next day to know for sure or to get a better idea. Um, but there was buying in there, but there's also enough selling to keep that spread narrow. Um, if there was no sellers in the market and the volume increased like that, you would expect the spread to be much wider. Uh, but the spread wasn't, it was quite narrow. So it's either absorption, if the buyers are strong, or it's the sellers selling into the demand that was there. And you generally know by the next bar, or at least the next bar or two, um, which, which was holding the upper hand, who's stronger. If the buyers are stronger, price will continue higher. If the sellers are stronger, then uh, price will start to push back down again. Now this was yesterday. And uh, today's bar, it's lunchtime here, and it hasn't finished trading yet. Um, price has traded as high as $16, and um, price has traded uh, from 75 cents. So um, it gapped up very slightly from the previous, uh, from the previous close, and it's trading up 25 cents at the moment on quite light volume. So at the moment, selling pressure looks like it's eased, and um, what supply has been around has been absorbed in here. And uh, we'll just have to see, see how price um, continues over the next day or two to see whether this turns out to be some form of shakeout and absorption, uh, some buying, modest buying, or whether further supply will emerge and keep price cascading lower. Okay, thanks very much. See ya.